this is Kingsway Culture Loving God Loving People Impacting Nations Welcome to Kingsway Ministries. Let's have a look at our online service. So this morning we're going to talk about the Bible and the, and the Word of God and, and how, how it means how you and I are going to act out of the Word of God. Amen? I've got a, a guy by the name of Steve Harold Ball. He said the following. He says, God's Word is not just for hear, hearing. It's not just to be heard. So God's word is not for you to just to come to church so you can hear it. All right? It's also not, and, and, and to be repeated. So, so it's not just you hearing it and repeating it. It is to be breathed. Let's do this. I'm not hearing it. When you breathe, that's what the word of God should be. I love this. I love this. To be lived and emulated with each action. Let me quickly read it again. God's word is not just to be heard and repeated. It is to be breathed, lived, and with every action and each action. Now, if you've got your Bibles with you, I've, I've asked it already, open your Bibles to the book of John chapter 4, and, and I've ministered many times, even from this pulpit, on John chapter 4, and when I mention this portion of Scripture, this well-known portion of Scripture, I used to preach from the perspective of worship, because the Samaritan woman had this one request at towards the end, and, 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 and I used to preach about that, but when I read this during the week, and I said, but hang on, there's much more to this. This, this portion of Scripture um, is, is, is teaches us much more than that. But let, before we get there, let me quickly ask you, who loves babies? Babies, babies, babies. I love babies. They don't love me necessarily because I've got this beard and I look like a monstrosity of a Father Christmas. So they don't always like to come to me, but I love babies. They smell nice, they, they're soft, they, they're cuddly. And, and so we love babies. And you know, but before you have a baby, when mom is pregnant or your wife is pregnant with the baby, she goes to the doctor and they measure in her tummies, they measure the baby, the size of the head, how long the baby is. First the small little peanut, and then it becomes bigger and bigger, and bigger, and as, as the baby grows, it becomes bigger, and then poof, it becomes me. And you, obviously, or my son and my daughter. I remember when he was small, small little boy. My daughter too, small. But then a baby gets born, and even there too, the doctor comes and they measure this and they measure that, and said, no, you had a nine pound baby. And the baby's length was 53 centimeters, measuring the baby. Why do you think they do that? To see progress, right? That's why we measure a baby. Because we want to see that a baby, the, the only job a baby has is to grow. And then to complain. And to cry. Come on. <laughs> and, 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 and babies are very demanding, man. There's only certain milk that they're allowed to drink or that they want to drink. They're not allowed to, you're not allowed to give them steak and vegetables. I'm not talking about purity now. I'm talking about a newborn baby. They can't have steak. So a lot of times it affects your meal time. And, then, and, and the milk must be a specific temperature. So mom would take the milk, warm it up, and put it right there to make sure that it's not too hot. You can see I've had a couple of children, right? But a baby is a lot of, lot of work. And, and if a baby is hungry, they don't care if the state president is in the seat. 
You know, when you're a pastor, you try to teach your kids not to cry. Especially when you have to sit right in front. But my son and daughter didn't care. They did not care. Whether it was, the, it was a very intimate moment when everything was soft. If they were hungry, they would raise that. And all you'd see is that little small thing at the back of the, uh, 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 that little thing that does this. And they will cry. They don't care who's there. They will cry. Because they demand, I am now hungry. And I will course here. I want food now. And mom and dad jumps around to give the bottle or a dummy, a dummy or something to make sure that baby is fed and baby is happy. Babies are very needy. Now, 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 now after the baby is born, at the hospital they give you this card. That card. Now, if you haven't had it, oh, Genade, I hope you have had somewhere along the line. I still got my kids, both my kids' card like that. And it gives you where all the injections are and, and, and stuff like that and dates and stuff like that. And then, then they give you a growth path. So when a baby is three months old and four months and six months and whatever, they need to have, be within a specific range of growth. All right? So every time you go take a child, for them to punish the child and give them injections and cry and mom and dad fights who's going to take the child to the clinic, if that always happens, um, because I don't want my child to cry, um, then, then, then they, you have to take the card with. Come on now, am I talking to people? That's what happens. Right, so, so I want us to understand that growth path. Because if a baby does not grow within those specific lines, and you have a, a 90, 85 percentile, and you have a 15 percentile, and whatever, if, the, if you come to the clinic and the sister says, hey, you're not feeding your child enough because it's not growing the way that the growth path is, is saying that the child must grow, then you and the mom and dad maybe feels, oh, shame, I haven't given my child enough food. And sometimes you have to supplement the food that you give to your child. Especially if you're breastfeeding your child, then you have to give other stuff to make sure. Or even the milk that you give, you'll find out, hey, my child doesn't want normal milk. I thought milk is milk. But I found out when I had my first child, milk is not milk. You get all different types of milk. Typical children, babies. They want specific milk. I want to talk about the Word of God. And I'm going to, if you've got your Bibles again, I want you to open up the book of John chapter 4. And it's a well-known portion of Scripture found from verse 9 of John 4. Then the woman of Samaria, Samaria said to him, this is Jesus, how is it that you, bring, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Verse 10, and if you've got your Bible, yeah, and you have to mark this verse. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that who says to you, give me a drink, you would ask, you would have asked him, capital M, meaning Jesus, and he would have given you living waters. Verse 11, the woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. There then do where then do you get the living waters? Verse 12. Then the great, and you greater, are you greater than your father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water, meaning the well's water, will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him or her will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him or her will become in him a fountain of waters springing up into the everlasting life. Now verse 15. Then the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go and call your husband. Now, I thought when I read this, I said, You didn't answer the lady, Jesus. She asked for the water, and you want me to go. You want her to go and fetch her husband, but there was a the plan. God's always uh, through His Son, Jesus. There was always something that He wanted to teach her. Then the woman answered and said, "I have no husband." And Jesus said to her, 
You have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, five husbands, and the one whom you have now have is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. Verse 19, then the woman said to him, so I perceive that you are a prophet. You see, after Jesus told all these things, suddenly he went from, she, Jesus went from a stir to a prophet. Suddenly something happened in this discussion. He said, I can perceive that you are a prophet. Verse 20, our fathers worshipped in this, on, this, on this mountain. And the Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where we should, all, where we should, worship, where we should worship. You see, I want to talk about the word this morning. This word. This word. But verse 10 says, if you knew the person you are speaking to, you would have wanted something different. You see, this lady came and, and she just saw a, a person by the name of Jesus come. And while his disciples went, went to the shop and went to go buy food, Jesus stood with this woman and it was outside his character to speak to women on their own. But Jesus stopped and he, and he started speaking to her and said, listen, listen, give me something to drink. And the whole story runs its course. The narrative is very clear. And he says, listen, um, um, if you understand that I am the word that became flesh, if you understand that I am the source and everything else is a resource, I am the one that was there when this wall was dug. I was the one that gave the wisdom that this wall must be dug. If you understand who I am, then you would understand that, that I have something greater to give to you. But she never had that revelation at the time because she was just a lady coming to fetch water. There was nothing else that she understood. But see, what I love about this portion of Scripture is, and I want to talk about the Word. The Word that became flesh was speaking to this lady. So quickly listen to this. There was a couple of needs that came in our story. The very first need was that from, she needed revelation. Because until the time that, that Jesus came and told her about her sins, it was just another sir. She needed revelation of who Jesus was. Now you and I as children of God, where do we find Jesus? You see, you cannot serve Jesus if you don't know him personally. He doesn't have grandchildren. He doesn't have anything other than children. So if we as children of God come to a place of understanding that, first I need to understand that I need to meet Jesus as my personal Savior. Then I have revelation knowledge about who he is. And Jesus says, listen, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, my word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So whatever you need, revelation that you need, comes from here. So that's the first thing that she needed. She needed revelation that the person that she speaks to, that you are speaking to in verse 10, if you only but know, if you only but know who I am, she needed revelation. And she received revelation. The second thing that she wanted was she, she, she had answers in her. She needed knowledge of greater things. She had questions. And we're going to talk about the worship now. She had questions about, okay, but what's this water you are referring to? Because I don't know about water. Do you think that you are greater than the people that were our forefathers? Do you think that you're greater? Yes, I am. Because I am the one that called them for a time such as that. So you need revelation about worship. You need to be able to say, who am I worshiping? And where does that revelation come from? It comes from the word of God. You cannot worship God in spirit and truth if you if you come from the revelation of my, my brother David. You can't worship God in your own sense because of what he's experiencing of God. You see, God does not have grandchildren. He only has children. 
So you, everyone has to have their own walk with God. You have to have your own relationship with God. That means you have to come to your well, your place of saying, Father, I, I don't know what all of this and, 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 and I don't know what love is, but, but, but Father, you can, you can show me your love. And I was one of those individuals. You need to show me your love. And when I understand your love, then I want to worship you because I can see through your word who you truly are. You are Jehovah Jireh, my provider. But I'm not worshiping you because you're providing. I'm worshiping because you're worthy of all my worship, all my praise, because you're honored. And you see, my worship stems off a relationship because I have an encounter with God. The third thing that we see, she had this need of living waters. I don't understand why people move from, 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 from revival service to revival service to revival service to revival service. And when you see people like, and I'm going to use the name, let's say T.D. Jakes come to South Africa, or everybody floods to the stadiums because T.D. Jakes is in the house. It's not T.D. Jakes or Harold LaRue or Big pompous for that matter. It's not them. It's what they have within them. We represent the light. And the light, when the light comes out, the darkness cannot stand. But the light, the word of God is true. The word of God brings change. But I can see my revelation through the word of God. And I will never have the relationship or the revelation if I don't spend time in his word. Because he's the word, John says, John chapter 1 says, he is the word that became flesh and dwelt amongst us. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So the encounter that this, this Samaritan lady had, had was much more greater than what we expect. But now, see the, the final thing that we see in the story, in this narrative. And this relationship that transpired in history was, Jesus confronted by his disciples and he says, Rabbi, eat food. You cannot be sustained with food only that you get on a Sunday morning here in church. If I give my baby only one bottle a week, they're not going to survive. They need to be fed every two hours, a small baby. Am I right? Help me, mothers. Am I right? Every two hours and you be fed. What, 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 what feeds you from Monday to Saturday? What, what, where, where do we get an, us, our, our, our food from, our nutrients that we need to spiritually grow? And I'm talking about spiritual growth here. Where are we going to get it from? From the word. See, I need to tell you this morning that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is the same. He is the answer for yesterday's problems. He is the answer for today's problems. And he's also the, the, the answer for tomorrow's problems. Because he doesn't live in time and space. He's not the one just for yesterday and today. He's also the one for the future. This is the Jesus we serve. But we, but we wait for prophets to stand up. And we run to prophets and say, prophesy over me, pastor. I need a word, prophet. Please give me a word. But God says, I've given you my word. But we run after prophet after prophet seeking a word. When God's word is given for us already. See, 1 Peter 2 says this. 1 Peter 2 verse 2. As newborn babies desire pure milk, as this baby, whether there's a state president in the house, whether there's a most important dignitary in the house, he or she don't care. If I'm hungry, I put my hunger on display. I'm making everybody that them hear me. I am screaming because I have a need. I am hungry. I need more. You see, Christians need to come to a place of saying, I'm putting my hunger on display because nothing will fill this void. No five husbands will fill this void. Nothing will fill this void. The void will only be filled by one person that fits into this void. And that's the word, Jesus Christ, the word that became flesh. And how do I get that void full? Is by spending time in his word. You see, I always say this, that this is not a menu that I can pick and choose what I believe and what I want to do. No, no, no. This is a manual where I apply my life to this. Everything goes around this. Everything, the way I do things are this. 
You recall when we spoke about relationships? Maybe today you have a problem with a brother or sister in the house. Or maybe at home or at your workplace. Where do I go to? Because my mind needs to be reformed, Romans 12 verse 2. Where do I go to? I go to the Word. And I open up at the book of Matthew 18. If you have something against your brother, or you know your brother's got something against you, go to him. You see, the Word teaches you and I how to live. The Word of God. The Word of God. The Word of God. You see, the Word of God brings revelation. Who's Jesus? Remember the one stage disciples were confronted by, some, by, by Jesus. He said, listen, who do the people say that I am? And I preached about this a couple of months ago. And then nobody knew. People said, no, that you are a prophet. No, you are this. No, you are that. And, and, and then Jesus turned the tables on them and said, okay, and you? Who do you say I am? So this morning I want to do it with you. Who do you say Jesus is? Because your revelation will determine how much you will be able to worship him. Your, your revelation will determine how much he's true to your life. Your, your revelation will determine how much you will read the word of God. Your revelation will say to you whether what you are hearing today, or what you are experiencing today is, is his word. Psalm says, I love the Psalms, it says, Thy word I have hidden in my heart. It's not up there that I may not sin against thee. Your word I have hidden, Psalm 119 verse 109. I have thy word I have hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. So what, what do I do with the word of God? I take it, I memorize it, I put it inside. Yeah, so when tough times come, I have, I have the word. In the first service I said this, too many children of God are walking around only Without a sword. You know, we look at, at, at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. It talks about the armor of God, right? It is the helmet of breastplate. No, shield. We walk around with shields, but no sword. So you want to walk around with, with, with trusting God and we're trusting God for this and trusting God for that and you walk around with a shield. But when God gives you a sword, you don't know how to use that sword. Amen. And you don't understand why the, the enemy is getting hold of you and getting marks into your body and you feel that I'm being hurt by the enemy. Why? Because you're only walking with a shield when God is also giving you a sword. And the church does not know how to use the sword. The word of God brings Revelation. The Word of God brings knowledge. The Word of God brings provision. The Word of God brings food. Jesus comes, his disciples say, but who gave him anything to eat? My food is to, to do the will of the Father that has sent me here, to complete his purpose and plans. You want our food, what we eat, we, the, 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 the physical manifestation of who God is needs to be more real to you and I than anything physical. Sorry, the spiritual significance. It needs to be more than anything physical. You know, when we know how to, to make the right noises. Hallelujah! We know those hallelujahs. And amen! And we know all those things. But when tough comes, tomorrow morning when you go to your workplace and the boss says, hey, I'm sorry, you have to let off into retrenchment then I don't have enough of knowledge of who he is in me. I run to the intercessors. All the intercessors of the church now need to be engaged. And I need to pray because I'm now unemployed. And suddenly fear sets in. Fear is the false evidence appearing real. Fear sets in because what's going to happen to me tomorrow? You see, I don't have the revelation yet. So, so that's why you have to spend time in the word. So you don't have the revelation that says, even if I go to the shadow of the valley of death, I will not be, I will not be hurt. I, 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 I don't have enough saying that I will never leave you nor forsake you, says God, Jesus. So I don't have enough of that inside of my being, inside of my spirit. So what do I react with in the physical realm? In the physical realm. I'm talking about the spirit of God. I'm talking about the word of God. 
I've got a portion of script I need to read to us. You see, I, I ask myself this question. As Christians, when our diet should be the word of God, because that's the food, right? We have substituted our diet with fast food, fast clicks, fast food restaurants called, I call them the Bucky theologians, the people that turn back the Bucky and they preach. Or people on YouTube. We do a search. Tough times. Click. And then all the videos pop up. Your computer populates with all videos of pastors, of spiritual leaders. And instead of you going looking what the Word of God says, you listen to their nonsense. And you don't understand why that revelation is not your revelation. That person, need, we need to have our own revelation. You can't come to me for my revelation. I know him and I love him and I love him dearly. Um, and I know I went through tough times. But even when I went through the shadow of the valley of death, I knew he was with me. I, don't, I know that. I know when they threatened my life, he was there with me. So every time that a new problem arises, I take them back to my old problem and say, there God came through, there God came through, there God came through, there God came through. I've got a whole wealth of God, test me how God has helped me and guided me through problems. But because of his word, because you know what? God sees his word higher than his name. Do you know that? His word. I'm not a man that I should lie. Now, Hebrews 5, very interesting. And I, and I know when I, when, I, when, I, when I prepared this, I'm thinking, Lord, there's people I think I'm going to give them my hiding this morning. But I'm not about a hiding. It's about, it's about correction this morning. It's about getting the body of Christ ready for war. This is what this is about. If you talk about growth, I'm asking myself, how much did I grow this year? We have got a couple of months away from the end of the year. Beginning of the year, we spoke about grow. We said we'll put God first. We said about the relationship. We said about uh, uh, obedience last week. And today we're talking about the word. How much growth did you and I do, do, do in this last year up until now? We're almost in October. And that, that's a lot of times where the indictment lies against the body of Christ. Let's quickly talk about the word. Hebrews, 11, or Hebrews 5, verse 12 to 14, says the following. For though by this time, say this time, you ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. Oracles of God means what God says, means what He spoke in the Word. You were supposed to, and I'm not talking about how long you've been saved. I'm not talking about a lot of times people saying, I'm serving Jesus, but your life does not give testimony of that. You're still battling with the same things you battled when you accepted Jesus Christ. If a baby doesn't grow, there's something wrong with a baby. Then we get all the doctors in and we get all the clever people in and we say, What's wrong with my child? Why is my child not growing? But spiritually, we accept it. Spiritually, we accept not growth, when people are not growing. See what it says here. For by, by this time, you ought to have been teachers. You need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracle, oracles of God. And you have come to need milk. You see, if I give my baby milk, it's fine. That special warm milk and all that. That's fine. But if I'm an adult male of 30 years of age and I'm only drinking milk, I'm, this milk is not going to sustain me. You see, there's a difference in, the, in, 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 in the, how we process stuff in our bodies from a baby. We are supposed to be spiritually mature, but we're still processing stuff like we are still babies. So if somebody offends you in church, you leave the church. If somebody doesn't want to speak to you, you don't speak to them. If somebody upsets you, you are angry with them. If somebody pulls in front of you, <laughs> you bless the Holy Soul. You see, we still want to react the way we acted prior to salvation. 
But Romans 12, 1 and 2, and I, and I always refer to this, verse, verse 2, it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. And the word I spoke, always speak, it says, is the word metamorpho, is that, that I need to be transformed. Yeah, how is that going to take place? By applying the manual. By applying what God has given me and you, the manual. <coughs> Remember, in the New Testament times, they never had the New Testament like you and I have. So they only had the prophets and the first five books of the Bible. So that's what they went on to. But they had a greater testimony than you and I have today. They did greater exploits for God than you and I are doing today. Because we become lulled into a false sense of security. It's Enoch. Let me read it further. Partakers of only milk. Okay, here we go. Um, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word. So if you're a spiritual baby for the last 10 years, there's something drastically wrong. You need to stand in front of a mirror and say, Lord, what is wrong with me? Why am I still reacting the way I reacted when I still accepted you as a personal savior? Why is this the way I'm reacting? Isn't it nine, nine or 10 times it's because you're not applying the word. You're not studying the word. You're not taking the word and putting it in your heart and keeping it there. Even Jesus, after he was, he went for a fast into the desert. The son of God. He knew what heaven looked like. He knew everything about heaven. Knew about the angels. Knew about his father. He comes. And the enemy comes and tests him. What did he use? No, he, he used his position as, as the son of God? No. The word. See, the word is a lamp and a light. You see, where I need to move, I need to apply the word. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So even in dark times and, and I feel like everything is closed around me, I'm saying, no, no, no. Even if I go to the shadow of the valley, shadow of death, I will not fear because he is with me. He's still, you know what I like about Psalms 23? He prepares a table for me in front of my enemies. But you see, uh, that's a relation, that's an intimate relationship with, with God. That means I spend time in his word, and I've taken his word and I've applied it inside. So when tough times come, Jesus said, listen, there is written. <laughs> there is written, Hosea 4, 6 says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. And it says, because they have rejected me, I've rejected them. Go and read it. See, where does a lack of knowledge come? Because I do not know who God is. Because I don't spend time in his word. I'm walking around with a shield, but without a sword. And I need the sword. Because Jesus knew faith. He didn't even, he, his faith was so great. He said, even, no, 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 just, just, just make these stones bread. He says, no. No, I'll give you all of this. He says, no. There is written. But we think that we're greater than Jesus. Or sometimes we think that in any case. But we need to understand something that's the importance and the relevance of the word of God in our lives. Amen? So let me finish, read, read this. Unskilled in the word of righteousness. For he is a baby. Shame. He, is, he or she is a baby. But solid food belongs to those. Listen to this. I love this. And it's not about the gray hair. <laughs> I love to have gray hair. Listen to what it says. <laughs> That's a privilege to have gray hair. Come on now. All right. Because this portion of scripture speaks to that. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is those who have reason of use. Listen to this. Reason of use have their senses. Listen to this. Their senses exercised. I love that. Your sense is exercise to discern. So when the enemy comes and knocks on your door and you think it's a friend, you cannot see it's the enemy because even in the word, it identifies the enemy. But we don't know what the enemy comes because the Bible says that people in the last days will be fooled 
by miracles, praying for people and they get healed. They'll get, they'll get fooled. The church will get fooled. Why? Because the church has not engaged in the weapon God has given you and I. We have not taken the weapon and put it right inside of our bodies. Put it right in the heart. And we don't apply the word of God in circumstances. Looking at the curve. Is the curve in the next one? Do we have a curve there? Looking at the curve. You see, when people get saved, that first month, maybe a couple of weeks, month, hey, there's a growth. It's almost like a 30-degree growth. Okay? And then, and then sometimes there's a tampering down. See, when, when my kids grew up, <laughs> you buy clothes, they would wear it once, and then it's too small. I'm sure everybody went through the same thing, right? But when we're older, we don't have that problem. See the curve, the growth curve, plates down, it, it, it comes down. It's not a, it's not a, a 30 degree up straight, but it, there's, a, there's a tampering down to a certain extent. Because when that tampering down takes place, that's when I'm secure in my relationship with him. So in the growth part, I do everything. All the baby does and is required to do is to sleep. Okay? That's all. They just sleep and cry and dirty nappies. That's all they do. And then sometimes they will g -g 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 -g, and that's all. They cannot communicate with you. They cannot wash the dishes. They cannot wash the car. They don't do those things because they're babies. All right? Sometimes I think teenagers are the same, but any case, that's another discussion. I love the teenagers in the house. But I'm, I want to say to you that, that understand that babies only, they, don't, they grow, but they only sleep. They don't have to do anything because they're being helped by mom and dad. That's a path of discipleship. That's an old new. But when, when you become age two, they start thinking for themselves and they start throwing. Actually, stage, already age one, they start becoming, throwing stuff around and start challenging mom and dad. When they start terrible twos happen, it's knock at the home because you don't know what the child wants and they scream and they throw temper tantrums and all those. From two to 11, 12, it's tough. It's tough. Why are you looking from two to eleven? Because, but, but, but you can expect from let's say two, three, you can start expecting your child to do some stuff and take responsibility for some of the stuff. When they're teenagers, you can you have to do that, but they don't do that in any case because they still think they're babies. <laughs> nah, I'm not going to look around. But, 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 but I'm saying to you is what, what, what I'm trying to get to is this: that. You cannot say, we'll wait for God to do something. When God, when you're a child of God and you pass a teenage time in your life, um, you're a spiritual teenager, then you start to get actively involved in what God wants for your life. Start searching the word of God. You don't wait for the pastor because a lot of times people wait for the pastor to prepare a word. He must go hear from God because it's like the Old Testament um, way of doing things. You know, we, we've got a New Testament mandate with an Old Testament application. Because the Old Testament application was, no, 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 Moses, you go and hear from God. And when God tells you what to do, because we saw the thunder, and we saw the lightning, and we just crack. So we're not going to go to that mountain. Moses, you go to the mountain, and you tell us what the mud God's telling you in the mountain. We'll wait at our tents, at the entrance of our tents. We're very happy, we're cozy, we've got heaters and fans and everything. So you go and hear from God, and then we, when God gives you a message, you come and tell us. That's Old Testament. In the book of Acts, we say, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes over you. You'll be my witnesses. So there's now an activation that, that has taken place in the spiritual realm. So how we do church is different. How you walk with God is, is different because now you have the Holy Spirit within you that guides you, that leads you. The Bible says in Romans, it says, they that are led by the Spirit of God are true sons and daughters of God. So, so the way you do things are different now and God, the Holy Spirit, will, will not speak outside the framework of the Word of God. You can read the book, of, um, the, the, the book of John further in John 14, 15, 16. It tells us the job description of the Holy Spirit. It's to teach everything that was Jesus to give it to you and I and to teach us more about Jesus. See, if you don't read the Bible, you will not know him. You will not have revelation knowledge of who he is. There's an expectation for growth. 
There's an expectation because you see, you see it says there, those that are, that are mature, that are spending time in the word, that have come to fully age, are those who by reason of use have their senses exercised. So, so when, when you understand, when I read the word of God and I see something happens, I say, oh, this is not, this is not God. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Something is going on here because we're led by the spirit and the spirit knows the, de- uh, the, the, the demographics of the spiritual world. No, no, this is not of God. Wait, wait, come, come, come. What's going on here? Why is my kids getting sick? This is not God's, excuse me, this is not God's heart. So I pray for my child and I, and I declare healing over him or her. I don't ask for it, I declare it. Because by his stripes, we are healed. It's done and dusted. I declare healing. See, I now have, by discernment, I can see this is the enemy trying to steal my joy. This is the enemy that's trying to do this. That's not Jesus testing me. Because I've heard this so many times. No, God is punishing me because I've done something wrong in my life. Read the word of God. That's not who he is. I'm saying again, there's an expectation of growth. But there's also a timeline that coincides with that. You can't be a child up until the age of 40 or 30 or 20. You can't. See, the timeline... Yesterday we were at a, at a little girl that we loved dearly's first birthday. And um, we remember when she was born. She was a small baby and basically sleeping or not sleeping. Actually, mom and dad will tell you not sleeping. Um, but, but she's no longer a baby. She's now one year old. And her personality is busy showing very much the mom's personality. Um, but the, the, the personality is starting to show in the baby over one year. You see, there's growth in the baby. There's a growth line, there's a curve that's taking place with growth, with even the physical. The same applies in the spiritual realm. And another year's time, she'll be two. And then five. And last, last night we said, then 21. Lord have mercy. See, if you don't grow, there's a stern warning. John 15 verse 2 says, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. This is Jesus. This is God. Takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. So as I'm spending time, remember the word of God is a two-edged sword that cuts. So it's not just all smooth sailing, right? It's not always just good times because that's a lot of the lies that people say. Accept Jesus Christ and your life will be cruise sailing. It's not the truth. It's a lie of the pits of hell. That's not what we are saying. Bearing in mind now, when the moment I become a child of God, I declare war against the enemy. So you are public enemy number one. Because you represent yourself with the one. But the good news is this. I know the end story. The end story is lost. So what a, what a great competition to be part in. What a great fight to be in. Try whatever you want to, Satan. Enemy, try what you want to do. I'm already the conqueror because Christ in me. I'm more than a conqueror in actual fact, the Bible says. So see, my, my perspective changes when I spend time in the Word. My perspective changes. But if the growth, so when, when, I, when I grow, and sometimes we say, oh, I don't like this in your life. And God says, Mm-mm, you need to change this. The way you spoke to your brother there, you need to go and apologize. But Lord, uh, he knows, uh, no, go and apologize. God says, listen, I don't like what you're doing now. You need to remove that out of your life. You're not, I, don't want, I want to sever that from you. That's not who you are. That's not your identity. And let me just say what I'm talking about. I'm talking about smoking or drinking or drugs or pornography or whatever, whatever sin, pet sin you, you're holding on to. Those things, when God says, uh-uh, this is enough now. My grace is sufficient, but you're busy playing with the grace now. You need to finish that because growth, you cannot at the age of 10, 15, 20, still have the same problem that you had when you became a child of God. There's something wrong with your growth. The, the, growth doesn't, the growth line, the, the growth doesn't help you out with your story. And you have to, God wants to come cut that out. That's when he starts pruning the tree. For what reason? To hurt you? No. So you can bear more fruit. So that people can look at you and say, you know, I knew this person 10 years ago. 
And I could never believe it's the same person. Who gets the glory? You. No. God. So God can be glorified. Because you've taken your life and you've taken the word of God and you've applied it. I've hidden your word so that I may not sin against thee. I'm almost finished. There's a danger of stagnation. You know, when we accept Jesus Christ, oh, everything is wonderful. The sun is bright. The, 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 it's, uh, the grass is green. Everything is wonderful until week one or week two or three or day two or day three, depending on how, how much time you spend in the Word. And then, oh, it's an effort to read the Bible, man. You know, hey, when the time I get home, Pastor, you don't understand. I'm so tired. I, I work so hard. I physically work. It's so hard. Um, and, 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 and by the time I want to read my Bible, I fall asleep and then I feel bad. And then... And, why don't you take the word of God and make it a priority first? Take some, take some comfort time. Wake up at five o'clock in the morning and spend some time with him before you go to work. Take an hour of your day and spend that on him. And then you'll start finding out because you see, then, 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 then your relationship with him, then you see how much he truly loves you because you put everything on the altar. He's put everything on the altar for you and I. But see, when I start stagnating, that stagnation takes place when I'm not excited about it. I'm not, I'm not talking about physical. I'm not talking about soul dimension excitement. I'm talking about spiritual excitement. Getting excited to get to church. Uh, there's a song that we used to sing, Get All Excited. Go and tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. We used to sing it and sing it and sing it over and over. I think we've moved too far away from the old choruses, the old songs that we used to sing. Maybe that's my gray year speaking, I don't know. But, I, but, I, but I'm saying to you is, is that get all excited to tell people about Jesus because if you tell people about Jesus, you are making yourself accountable towards them. So because tomorrow you can't come down and look like you've been baptized in sour milk because you, have not, you don't have a smile on your face. No, 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 no. You, 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 people say, but aren't you supposed to be a child of God? Put a smile on your dial. No matter what life, no matter what, what happens in your life. Gives you lemon, gives you lemons, you make lemonade. You, you make sure that your life is a, is a reflection, not of what's happening in your life, but what you know about who he is and his word. There's only one way. There's a clear con um, contrast between milk and steak. If I give a baby, even if it's a sinister steak, I'm going to have a problem. Okay, forget the fact that they don't have teeth to chew. Forget the fact that they can, they can swallow it and they can get stuck there. Forget all those factors. Their, their bodies are not made to absorb that. They only can drink milk. But the same applies, as I said earlier on. Grown up that only drinks milk, there's serious problems. Unless there's a serious medical condition, you can't just survive only on milk. A person that we know quite well, um, she was on, 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 what do they call it? Um, bucks? She was, on, um, she was, she was basically um, comatose um, in, 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 a, in, a, in a hospital, and they couldn't reach her. She was like, really, she, she, had, a, she, had, a, she had a stroke. And they gave her food, you know, they pump food into your stomach, this, a tube, that a tube in, uh, that, that fed her. That's not normal, is it? It's not normal. Because your body has been created to absorb certain nutrients in a specific way. And that's why we have enzymes and, 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 and. So why don't we want the steaks? I don't understand why we don't want, I love steak. You can see it, hey? Uh, I don't like the vegetable part. Mm-mm but I love the steak. But I'm saying to you and I, why, why have we stopped eating steak? Why, don't want to, why do we want the milk? And I'm gonna talk about the milk, um, about, about the steak, you know, the milk. What, is, what does the milk represent? That means if we keep on having to tell you what salvation is, every time that there's a call out for altar call for people that don't accept Jesus Christ, you come forward and get prayed for. Every time. Come on, man. Really. <laughs> My son no more, more problem. But when he was young and he, and he did something wrong, he used to get in hiding. With love. But he got a hiding. But the hiding didn't change our relationship. You see, because I'm secure, my, my, my son 
It's secure in the relationship that we have. As a child of God, you need to be secure. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. That's one of the principles, the first principles. So don't come, and when you go through tough times, because remember, we've got, we've, we've got, the, we've got the protection of our faith. Don't let your faith be, be hammered. You know because you know because you know. Because you've read the Bible. And so many witnesses, if you don't know about the witnesses, go and read what Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11 says. How many witnesses of faith? If you don't know about that. But take the word of God. What role does the Bible play? The word of God play? I'm going to close with that. Verse 13 of chapter 5 of Hebrews talks about people are unskilled in the word of righteousness. So, so when you are unskilled, you, you, you don't know how to. You won't give an unskilled person to drive your car. People that don't have a driver's license to drive your car. You won't do that. But spiritually, we a lot of times want God to allow us to, to do things that we're not supposed to do. Mature, maturity shows that I have some thick stakes. Thick stakes. I'm going to close with this portion here, and it says, discernment through the word. I, I love this verse 14. We read it already, but verse 14 says this. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. So your body can, can take the steak and work through the steak with all the enzymes and, and, and to get it so your body can absorb what it needs and get rid of what it doesn't need, right? Your body's got that capacity, but we still want the milk. But it says here that if you are full of AIDS, that is those who are reason of use have their senses exercised. So there's exercise taking place. I'm going to the Word of God, exercising my reading, exercising the Word of God, applying the Word of God in circumstances so that I now, no, no more functioning out of what I've heard somebody say, some, some YouTube movie I watched, the YouTube thing I watched. No, no, no. I apply my own understanding of the Word of God through the Word of God where the Holy Spirit comes and guides and leads us. Amen? Training our senses to know what is good and what is evil through the Word of God. So, in conclusion, John speaks about these couple of things that we read, John chapter 4, that, that you and I, one needs to take this thing and understand that there is a growth path that God wants you and I to walk in. There's a path that God requires of you and I to walk in. Four, four occasions, four needs that by, by understanding the word of God, applying the word of God, that those needs can be addressed. Don't wait for your pastor. And again, I'm saying, we love helping. We love, we truly love helping. At some stage, you need to grow up because if I have to keep on making coffee for my son and my daughter or mama has to make food for them up until they're 40, there's something wrong with that relationship. They need to grow up. At some sense, we get some responsibility for our kids. Now, you're going to ask me, and I'm going to close with that. How do we practically do this? Because you've heard me now for 30 minutes to 45 minutes Speak about the Word of God. How do we practically do this? This is how we're going to do it. Get four or five people, friends, work colleagues. Get four or five people. And you phone them and say, look, listen, I want to start a, not a study group, but a reading group. Because there's enough study groups around. A reading group. And the, the five of you or the ten of you, whatever amount that is, decide what book you're going to, Take first. I will make a suggestion, start with the book of John. Or the book of Romans. Maybe the book of Romans. I think Romans will be the best book to start off with. Because in the book of Romans, we are taught what salvation is. We are taught who we are. Um, we are taught that um, we are taught about how to deal with sin, the book of Romans. So you decide, let's argument say you, you decide to use the book of Romans. And amongst yourself, you make yourself accountable. You read one chapter a day. Only one. And the first week, we've done it as a family, the first week you just read. You don't mark anything in your Bible. You just read. 
The second week, you start making, underlining certain words that stands out, that jumps out. And, you, and my wife will tell you, normally I have to buy new Bibles, used to buy new Bibles every year, because normally the first book that falls out is, the pages get loose, is my book of Romans. So my book of Romans is marked all over the place. Um, and there's no space to write anymore. But then you, and then you, so then week two is you start marking. Week three, you get yourself a little book, A5 size. And you start writing those words down, verse for verse. Make, I'm teaching you how to do Bible study, right? I'm doing a discipleship training course, right? You make, you make, and then you start writing on what God is telling you about that. Now when you get together as friends, you don't talk about the rugby <laughs> and the stupid faults and mistakes that people make and give us a guy that can't kick a ball to kick a ball when it was crucial. And we lose with one point. That was tough to, to witness. You don't talk about that rubbish anymore. You start talking about the word. Now you get together. And say, you know what? I, I read um, last night we were supposed to read chapter 3. Hey, yeah. Did you read 20, uh, verse 23? Yeah, now I saw that. I said, Isn't it wonderful? And now suddenly you and your friend that you made yourself accountable to are talking about what? The word. Now the word becomes part of your daily exercise. And well, you know what's wonderful about that? Now you will sit at OK or Checkers or Pick and Pay or any of those stores and you'll be in the queue and you'll hear people needing answers that two days ago or a day ago you read in the portion of scripture. Now you start referring to, now can I, can I maybe just share something with you? I, I read, I read in, in the Bible, you know, Romans uh, 6 verse 23, I read this, you know, this will maybe help you in your situation. Now you start memorizing the word of God because you've read it now three weeks in a row, three months in a row, you've read it and you've read it and you've marked it. So tomorrow when you, when you, when you go through your Bible through tough times and suddenly Romans all, looks like a whole highlighted book in the Bible, you see, ah, oh, okay, I remember that. You see, now what's happening is the word of God is now speaking into your circumstances. And now you're taking the word of God now and it's not something outside there with the, with, with the thicker level of dust and the weight of the book. Um, but, but, but now the word of God starts speaking to you. And what's nice about this? In a year's time, you have that same book and you go to tough, tough, tough times and you just go through there. You can celebrate your victories. On this date, we were reading Romans. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. I, remember, I, could, I almost forgot this. Oh, okay. And suddenly now your own notebook, your own revelation becomes revelation to you in a time of need.